Hey guys, my name is Jason, and this is the Respiratory Culture In Service. The reason we're doing this in service is because we've had a high infection rate here in the medical ICU, and so we're going to be changing the way that we're collecting our respiratory cultures. So, first, we've got our best practice method. It's going to be a two person collection technique. It could be two RNs, two RTs, or an RN and an RT. And so, it's going to be a sterile procedure. You're going to go grab one of these sterile suction canister kits, and then you're, you'll grab a buddy that'll be uh, clean and washed up. Put your sterile gloves on, and you'll grab your suction and your Lucan's tube. We don't want you to set the Lucan's tube on the bedside table or the bed, just leave it in the cradle. And as, while you're sterile, you'll go ahead and hook up. You'll also need your buddy to connect your 10 foot long tubing to the other end. And then your buddy is going to be the one that disconnects the patient from the ventilator while you attain your sample and your buddy would connect your patient back up to the ventilator. Next, after you've obtained your sample, we don't want you taking the rubber tubing and folding it over on itself, but rather use the lid provided, and you need to make sure you send your sample down within one hour. If it's gonna take more than an hour, go ahead and collect a new sample. We're also gonna be limiting the amount of saline that you're using for your patient. Now if you have a little bit of thick secretions right here you absolutely can use that and the uh, saline does not hurt your sample. What we're going to do is we're going to limit the amount that actually goes into the patient's lungs. But if you have a thick amount right here you can put on your pinky, the pink bullet, and then you can get your sample the rest of the way. If you are going to suction your patient down the ET tube, we want you to advance the inline catheter first, then get your sample, and then suction it all the way back out. That should take less than 10 seconds. The reason you want to advance the inline suction first is if you apply the saline first, the patient will start to cough and gag and bite down and you won't be able to advance the tube. Now, not always is your patient going to be stable enough to just pop them off the ventilator and collect your sample this way. And so we have another method. It's the one that you are used to. We have our inline catheter. We want you to change it out every time you get in the sample, even if your patient just got intubated and the inline suction has only been used once. Go ahead and grab a new inline catheter. And those can be found in a respiratory pixis room. I like to line them up, kind of like a puzzle piece, exactly how they should go on. And this can be a one person technique. And you just pop off the patient on the ventilator and, and change out the circuit. After you've obtained a brand new or after you've gotten your inline suction, then you can go ahead and connect up to the Lucan's tube and connect your 10 foot long tubing and attain your sample. After you've attained the sample or anytime you suctioned your patient, we want you to completely clear the inline suction and you can use those, um, those pink bullets. And then we also want you to clear it all the way to the suction canister through the 10 foot long tubing. And if your suction canister is getting full, go ahead and change that out. We also don't want to use our um, normal saline flushes to um, do a pulmonary lavage unless the doctor orders it. Just if you need to suction your patient, just use these. Uh, one other quick tidbit to note is those nebulizers. If you see them with a lot of fluid in them on the bedside, please go ahead and discard those because it's been shown that they're growing pseudomonas in the hospital. Make sure you let your RT know so that they don't get surprised when they walk into the room. Thanks guys, appreciate it.